Welcome back to the Cardinal Report. Joining us now is North Central Sports Information Director, Clark Tusher. Clark, thanks for coming in. It's nice to be here. So the North Central College men's basketball team aren't the only Cardinals making a splash in the tournament, as in the D1 tournament, John Giannini, the head coach for LaSalle, taking his team to the Sweet 16. He's a former Cardinal himself. Yeah, John's a class of 84 graduate, and he's actually a trustee of the college. He actually uh, uh, told some of our people that you know one of the great things about having this elevated uh, level of publicity is being able to talk you know publicly about you know, his experience at North Central and what that's done for him, uh, which you know we certainly we uh, we appreciate him doing, and, and we uh, you know, appreciate the opportunity to have that uh, broadcast nationally a little bit, and, and we're glad that uh, uh, you know. John's been been kind of he's been true to his school as as the Beach Boys would have us do. <laughs> nice reference there. <laughs> and back to the current Cardinals uh, on a national stage. Nathan Fitzenrider unable to get to the top of the podium in wrestling. He he was favored to get to the the finals. He just just had the wrong day to have a bad day. Well, more than any other sport, the wrestling tournament tends to uh, turn itself upside down as far as the rankings are concerned at the national championships because there's so little separating each of the different wrestlers, and you're you're up against a lot of guys you don't normally see. Uh, you know, he just got into a situation against a good wrestler where he got caught in a bad position, and 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 that was it. I and mean, before you before you knew it, it was over. Uh, so you know, to his credit, he he bounced back. You know, right after that happened, and, and got a couple of wins that night, and uh, put himself in position to finish third uh, the next day, which he uh, which he was able to pull off. And then uh, back at home at North Central, the women's lacrosse team. They got their home season off to the right start as they have a, a big win against the College of Mount St. Joseph. Yeah, you know, that's uh, the first conference game for them this year, and it was a good way to start off conference play. It's a team we've had uh, a decent level of success against, and, uh, you know, to be able to open the home schedule like that, uh, certainly, uh, certainly a good thing to be able to do. It was fun to watch, too, and the Cardinal Report was there to see the women's lacrosse team shine in their home opener. Let's go to the highlight. North Central women's lacrosse team returning from a West Coast trip with a 1-2 and two record as the College of Mount St. Joseph comes to town hoping to spoil the Cardinals' home opener. But the home squad strikes first as Adelaide Diekmeyer slashes through the arc and finds the back of the net. On the restart, Leah Lepresti thinks about firing but pulls back. She then finds Gina Fisher who comes into your screen and into the scorebooks to move the North Central lead to two. Fisher wasn't done yet as she takes the pass from Danielle Fiala and bounces it past the Lions. She had three goals in the half and four in the game, Cardinals up 6-0. After the College of Mount St. Joseph gets one on the board, it's Fiala's turn to get in on the scoring. She fights through the Lions den to make it 7-1. Less than a minute later, she would scoop it up right outside the crease and goes corner pocket. A Jacqueline Morgan goal pushes the Cardinal lead to 9-1 heading into the break. Ball movement, the key to success in the second, as North Central starts off with a Deke Meyer to Mallory Barr combo. Then Claire Norfleet finds Bianca Perry in front of the net, and she threads the needle to push the lead to 10. Fisher now keeping the Lions defense on their heels. She decides Norfleet deserves a goal of her own. Her fleet of foot makes it 15 to two Cardinals. And the defense created offense all afternoon as Fisher forces the turnover and flips the field with a pass to Diekmeyer. Her and Caitlin Wilkie decide to play a little back and forth, and the Cardinals finish the way they started with Diekmeyer finding the back of the net for her third goal of the game. Fiala led the way with five, and Sarah Hahn tallied eight saves as North Central moves to 2-2 two and two with an 18-3 win. Clark, this women's lacrosse team sort of still in its infancy. I know they've been around for a couple years now, but... It seems that they're really starting to find their stride, and the more they play, the more experience they have. Uh, yeah, they, they had a good year recruiting. They've got a couple of players in uh, Gina Fisher and Claire Norfleet who are, are very talented players from the St. Louis area, which is kind of a new area where we've ventured into in terms of recruiting. Uh, and they've kind of taken the next step to where they've got only got enough. You know, before they were just trying to get you know enough all the players on the field who knew you know who were capable players and, right. and could help out. Now they've got uh, some on the bench as well, where, so they can do some substituting and, and keep some people fresh and, and not necessarily lose anything on the field. Yeah, and you mentioned some of the young guns in Fisher and Norfleet, but there's also some experience on that team. Danielle Fiala comes to mind, where she's sort of helping the young girls come along and really being a leader on this team. Yeah, Danielle and then uh, Jackie and Jessica Morgan are uh, a couple of the four-year letter winners that have been starters since uh, since day one, uh, and have been at impact players that whole time. You know, Danielle is the team's all-time leading, all leading scorer. Uh, you know, that's uh, 
a lot of uh, it's been a good mix of youth and experience uh, you know and, and across across the, the board they're they're all very skilled and uh, very capable players so uh, you know having them have a chance to go on spring break and, and spend a lot of time together and play a lot together uh, and then come back uh, you could definitely see the benefit of that as they opened up at home and one team that's going to be returning home with smiles on their faces is the women's softball team as they're coming back from Florida with a 10-0 record looking solid this year yeah, you know they uh, they got another pitcher in Andrea Starr uh, who was able to uh, to to really compete at a high level uh, opposite Velasta Manja, who's been the number one starter the last couple of years, uh, and and being able to do that uh, back and forth and not lose anything uh, pitching wise, it definitely helps not only the defense but it helps the offense because you know they can be patient and and you know pick their spots on offense rather than having to press because they have to score a certain amount of runs uh, because we've given them up on the other end. So I think uh, both of those sides are, are kind of feeding off the other to success. Well, it should be an exciting season to watch on the Diamond, Clark. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. The men's basketball team finishes the year with a 28-4 record, establishing a new program marked for wins. We return next week with the spring sports season in full swing. I'm Mark Dahlquist. We'll see you here next time on the Cardinal Report.